On the 25th of January, Chelsea announced they had parted company with head coach Frank Lampard, and the following day officially unveiled Thomas Tuchel as his replacement. With the German coach becoming the 14th managerial appointment of Roman Abramovich's 17 and a half year tenure as owner at Stamford Bridge. Having taken PSG to their first Champions League final in 2020, Tuchel has the kind of pedigree that Abramovich likes, and has the task of quickly improving performances and results on the field, gaining Champions League qualification, and getting the best out of the big money signings the club made in 2020. But how will he go about his new job, and does he have what it takes to turn around fortunes in West London? Let's find out. Before we dive into Tuchel, let's quickly touch on why Frank Lampard lost his job. Perhaps the defining factor which eventually saw him sacked was his inability to find a system that could both integrate his best players and beat top opposition. Despite having one of the strongest and deepest squads in the Premier League, perhaps the strongest after City and Liverpool, Lampard struggled to settle on his best 11, and with the exception of West Ham, failed to beat any side currently in the top half of the table, taking just two points from a possible 18 in games against the traditional top six and Leicester. The English coach used 27 different players this season, more than any other manager in the league, suggesting that he never fully trusted the teams he was putting out despite very rarely changing his side's shape, sticking almost exclusively to a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. Tuchel, on the other hand, is famous for switching between multiple systems, not because he's indecisive, but because of his meticulous match preparation. He adapts his teams on a game-by-game -game basis in order to combat the most dangerous threats and exploit the biggest weaknesses of the opposition they're up against. This may sound like something every decent manager does, but it is particularly visible with Tuchel. Unlike Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola, who rose to prominence with a set style, philosophy and starting eleven, Tuchel made a name for himself in his first senior coaching role at Mainz by constantly changing his team around depending on which side they faced, something he was forced to do due to the lack of quality in his squad. While his players couldn't necessarily match their opponents one-on-one, -on -one, they could succeed by outwitting them tactically, changing formation up to six times a game. By doing this, he led a club with an annual budget of 15 million euros to fifth in the Bundesliga, the highest finish in their history, winning just one fewer game than Bayern Munich in the 2010-11 campaign. And it's a formula he stuck to in the jobs that followed. In his two seasons at Borussia Dortmund, he used 11 different formations, primarily ones with a single centre-forward, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. In his two and a half years at PSG, he used 10 different formations and in 2019-20 predominantly played two up top in order to integrate Neymar, Mbappe, Di Maria and Icardi into the same side. It's this kind of setup that could get the best out of a player like Timo Werner, who often played alongside Yusuf Poulsen in a two at RB Leipzig. Unlike some other managers who have been branded as pragmatic, with Tuchel it is not a synonym for dull defensive football. In 2015-16, his Dortmund team scored 82 goals in the league, more than Guardiola's supreme Bayern Munich, and the highest Bundesliga tally ever managed by a BVB side. Their total of 78 points from 34 games was also their second highest in history, and would have been enough to win them the title in all but three of the previous 52 seasons. The following campaign, Aubameyang beat Robert Lewandowski to the Golden Boot, with his 31 goals the highest tally managed by a Bundesliga player in 40 years at the time. This was partly down to the fact Tuchel had made Dortmund a more dominant ball-playing team. They averaged 61% possession with an 85% pass accuracy, a giant leap from their peak counter-pressing days under Jurgen Klopp. With a younger, less technically gifted squad at Mainz, Tuchel had favoured a more aggressive pressing style, while at the Westfalenstadion, his system more closely reflected the positional play of a pep team. At PSG, he took an already dominant side full of superstars and made them work harder as a unit off the ball, an approach which helped them break their curse in the Champions League knockout stages. A number of Chelsea's past managers ultimately fell as a result of being too stubborn, with Sarri, Conte and Mourinho all coming to mind in this regard. Their last truly pragmatic appointment was arguably Carlo Ancelotti, who in 2009-10 steered the club to a League and Cup double and set a new record for goals scored in a Premier League season, with both Frank Lampard and Didier Drogba enjoying their finest campaigns in a blue jersey. While Tuchel isn't inheriting the strong spine of title winners Ancelotti did, his ability to adapt stylistically is what this current Chelsea squad needs.
Whereas previous managers have complained that they haven't had the right players to fit their system, Tuchel should be able to create a new and effective one based on the quality personnel he has at his disposal, and as a result go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the big games far better than Lampard did. Tuchel's tactical prowess should go hand-in-hand -hand with how he manages his players at Stamford Bridge. Lampard quickly came under fire this season for the failure of new expensive signings to gel quickly into his system, while reports of discontent in the dressing room were rife. Tuchel's experience alone should garner more trust from the players. Unlike Lampard, who won everything there was to win as a player but had just a year of managerial experience when he took the Chelsea job in 2019, Tuchel never even made it to the German top flight as a player and was forced to retire at 24 following a serious knee injury, but now has over 20 years of coaching under his belt despite being just 5 years Lampard senior. He was given his first job in charge of Stuttgart's under-14s by Ralf Rangnick, eventually winning the Bundesliga with their under-19s in 2005 and repeated the feat with Mainz's youth side in 2009. So, while fans may be worried that the development of Chelsea's academy products could be halted by a new manager in need of quick results, Tuchel is one of the best out there when it comes to working with young players. He launched the career of Andre Schürrle at Mainz, gave Christian Pulisic his break at Dortmund, and helped shape Usman Dembele into a player so impressive that Barcelona shelled out 130 million euros for him. His excellent work with Julian Weigl saw the five capped international become one of the most sought after young midfielders in Europe, and he's never looked quite the same since Tuchel left Dortmund in 2017. Meanwhile, he's also the first coach to have fully unlocked the potential of Moise Ken. While Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount, and Rhys James were all left out of the starting lineup in his first game against Wolves, there's no doubt they will get their chance under the German coach. And given James's attacking prowess, Mount's work rate and Abraham's ability in the box, there's reason to hope they can become key players in his system. His preference for a ball-playing defensive midfielder, meanwhile, should give Billy Gilmore hope in the long term. Tuchel was also hard to get the best out of Chelsea's big money signings, namely Timo Werner and Kai Havertz. His close friendship with Ralf Rangnick, who helped Werner become Europe's most exciting young striker at Leipzig, will no doubt be beneficial. While the fact Havertz thrived under Peter Bosch, another coach known for his tactical flexibility bodes well. And there are of course the players he's already familiar with, the aforementioned Pudasic has the potential to explode in the next 18 months, while Thiago Silva, an already vocal figure in the Chelsea dressing room, was Tuchel's captain at PSG. Towards the end of Frank Lampard's tenure, the former midfielder was accused of lacking communication with players, particularly in regards to tactical instruction. Tuchel's track record is quite the opposite. As Rafa Honigstein wrote in The Guardian back in 2010, he breaks football down into the smallest possible parts and has his charges practice until they've internalised them all. If Tuchel can live up to this at Stamford Bridge, he will no doubt find success. However, Tuchel's managerial style hasn't always gone down well. A tactical obsessive determined to instil the same enthusiasm in his pupils, his intense approach can see players become tired and alienated. By the time he left Mainz in 2014, some players had simply had enough, with goalkeeper Heinz Müller referring to him as a dictator, and his controlling nature has unsurprisingly seen him fall out with club hierarchies too. He was sacked by Borussia Dortmund just days after leading them to the DFB Pokal in 2017, having fallen out with sporting director Michael Zork and chief scout Sven Mislintat, although it must be noted that the emotional impact of the bomb attack on the team bus a month earlier cast a traumatic shadow over the season as a whole. His exit from PSG bore similarities, with Tuchel and sporting director Leonardo engaging in a public spat over the club's transfer policy two months before he was shown the door. Julian Nagelsmann, who studied under him at Augsburg, apparently described him as the type of coach who either gets on super well with people or not at all. Roman Abramovich and Marina Granovskaya are banking on him doing the former at Stamford Bridge. If not, it could be a short stay. So that was our take on how Thomas Tuchel can turn Chelsea around, but what do you make of his chances at Stamford Bridge? Let us know in the comments below and we'll do our best to reply. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like and why not stick around on Football Daily by checking out the reaction from earlier in the week, where we delved into why Frank Lampard was really sacked by Chelsea. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.